Right, well, um, I, I thought I'd show something um, sort of almost completely not really representative of what, of what I've sort of done almost before or since. It's a, it's a clip from Scott Pilgrim. Um, um, and that was also, also a very interesting period in time because, you know, it was 2008. It was like the bottom of the recession and we were suddenly all packed off to Toronto for... Hey. For eight months. This is my hometown. No, nothing wrong. With, nothing wrong with that. But I think no, no. I love, I love Toronto. Don't, 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 don't get me wrong. Uh, it was no, it was a fantastic experience. But I think it was just the fact that uh, in, at, at a time where actually productions were actually being cancelled, and in fact we were even told a week before that a show that had even been greenlit was in pre-production, the studio had pulled. But for some reason Scott Pilgrim sort of snuck through, and we all we suddenly w went out there and we'd work. We embarked on this. Major, major sort of production. Certainly for Edgar, was, I think one of the biggest things he'd, he'd done up to that point. And you know, they'd got me out. Uh, you know, even two months before we sort of shot a frame to do things like animatics right, and right, all the, right. and all the test stuff. Because of course, once you're committed to visual effects and and music, you you know you've you've committed to shot lengths yeah. and camera positions and everything. So the only time as an editor you can sort of put an influence in is at the start. Mm -hmm. So you'd go there and we'd sort of cut whole sequences with drawings and uh, some previs and stunt, stunt videos, which yeah. the stunt coordinator would give you as just little tiny files and you'd just sort of put it all together. And you'd build the sound effects and you, you could actually show the whole scene, um, um, how it more or less would sound, how it would look, um, and you could tweak it, but there, there has to be a point where you, where you sort of lock it, and to an extent you've sort of locked that scene, even mm. before you've shot it, yeah. you've locked it. I mean, there's an element always afterwards, you know, otherwise there'd be no post-production, but you know, you, you could then, you'd have to tweak further. But in order for VFX to get a grip on things and for sets to be built and action to be decided, you had to make all those decisions ahead of time. And it was like what you were saying, you know, four weeks into the shoot, we were turning shots turn over. over yeah. You had to turn them over, because we were told, if you don't hand shots over, final shots four weeks in, then they won't be ready 18 months from now. Absolutely. You're going to miss the, you're going to miss yeah. the deadline. Yeah. So you, 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 it's, it demands a real sort of pr process to sort of get on top of that. Um, but the scene I'm going to show here, <clears throat> uh, the, the background is there's this, there's this guy, Scott, and he's after the girl, of course. Um, but the girl has seven evil ex-boyfriends who he has to fight in various stages. And each fight is, is a little bit different. Um, one is more of a martial arts thing. Uh, one is almost a fight with, uh, uh, that is reminiscent of a, of a Bollywood film. Uh, the one I'm going to show is, is a fight with, basically, it's Scott's band, because he's sort of in a garage band, and he's fighting a pair of Japanese uh, twins, but sort of like DJ techno twins so it's sort of a battle of the bands thing only they don't realize that the bands are actually going on at the same time not one after the other so uh, so okay. uh, I think let's, that let's show it yeah well, that's absolutely yeah get the full so that that basically represented a series of headaches um, <laughs> Uh, but actually what it is it's a real really good example is when every department Really chips in and works well together because obviously we did had we had a lot of previous on that, um, and obviously Edgar had, had you know it, it sort of could only go one way of course, but uh, within that you could actually have a lot of leeway, especially in the cutaways and things, because obviously musically things had to happen at a certain point, visually things had to uh, resolve at a certain point. Um, and it was a very, it was a very, very long shoot. We were in a huge warehouse in in Toronto and marshalling all those sort of essays and to make sure a lot of the practical elements worked well together. Um, and then the edit. I mean, Edgar roped in a lot of his friends. We had um, the musician Beck, who did the music for Sex for Bomb, and Nigel Godrich produced the sort of soundtrack and then Double Negative did all these incredible visual effects, but as well as previous, we'd start having post viz as well. So then DNIC would then start setting temps on top of the actual shots that you'd edit. And you go, okay, well, that could be a few frames here and you need a little look from the 
creature there before that happens. And so if you had five more frames, and, and that's how you'd sort of, you'd sort of plot it out. Um, I mean, my, my abiding memory from that is right at the end. Um, I mean, if we were listening to this in like a proper sort of 5-1 environment, we, we were mixing that. I mean, every meter was pitted to the red. You couldn't get anything <laughs> louder, uh, especially that last explosion. And somewhere, Julian, our sound mixer, that roar that that kind of yeti creature gives at the end. Uh, to this day, I, say, I don't know where he found the headroom <laughs> to put it above everything else. And it wasn't distorting, and it was clear. But I, I was sort of forever grateful that he could almost like turn it up to 11 <laughs> and, and, and have that there. But that was, you know. Uh, and even then, just looking at that, I, I haven't seen it since, literally since we sort of uh, uh, did it. But even like playing, I'd forgotten that we'd played with aspect ratios. You know, how it just goes from 235 to 185, which I remember we sort of did throughout the film. And just little subtle things. Eric is a very, very big fan of hiding detail in, in, in shots. So you watch it once, you go, OK, it's a, it's a good movie. But you can watch it again, and you just realize how many things are bound into each other. And uh, that just took, I mean, that whole process from start to finish was 20 months, which was a, a long a long process. You're in animation uh, at that point. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. A long and a loud yeah. one, yeah. You're sitting in the edit suite, you look out the window and you go, oh look, spring's come <laughs> around. <laughs> Again, <laughs> you know. Oh dear. Oh, right. my birthday's here exactly. again. <laughs>